we went through a little bit of your career. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the playoffs right now. And okay. the wild card game games were this past week. A lot of craziness. Uh, nobody would have thought that four of the six games were going to be blowouts. Nobody. Right. Um, and Kyler Murray showed that he was a rookie. Matthew right. Stafford uh, showed everybody that he could st- he could he could play in the playoffs. He's not just a regular season quarterback, and that he could play for a good team. What really stuck out to you in the, in the first week of the playoffs, the wild card games? Was it the Cowboys in that ridiculous play call at the end of the game? What really stood out to you that either bothered you or uh, you just see the transition of the game just changing? Well, I mean, to be honest, uh, what stood out to me was like Tom Brady. I, I hate to say it, you know, and be cliche. I mean, he's just a masterful artist when it comes to, to football, man. And, and it just shows his dominance. And I feel like, um, you know, they're the team to beat. I mean, even though, you know, we talk about green Bay, obviously the number one seed, but you know, that to me, because it's, it's just so crazy that again, Tom Brady is doing what he's doing and has a opportunity to go back to back, um, with how they are playing right now. Um, but again, I mean, Dallas is Dallas, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't really. Don't um, say that to any of the Dallas fans. They're going to have a heart attack. And Dallas season ticket holders. <laughs> Listen, I, I have a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans because I, I'm here in the Washington, D.C. area. And it's it's either the Washington football team or the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have a lot of friends. And I had to check up on them, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> After the game. But. But I think, you know, to me, that's what stood out, man, um, to be honest. You know, I hate to, you know, kind of be cliche, but it's just it, it dumb, it's dumbfounded, you know, that this guy has the possibility of doing back-to-back. I mean, how, is, how old is he, 40? 44. Four? Going to be 44 45. years yeah. old. Like, that's the, to me, that stands out. Um, but obviously, we got another week to go. Um, I don't see blowouts, but shit, you never know, man. Mm. I want to go back to uh, I want to go back to when you were with the Patriots. I mean, Bill Belichick's never thought of as somebody that speaks a lot when he's in the press conferences and all that, but seems to be a very interesting guy off the field sometimes from what we've heard. Um, what is the most interesting thing that you found out out of Bill Belichick behind the scenes, kind of, and what is the most interesting thing he said to you? Um, well, behind the scenes, uh, I mean, he's just a, a normal guy, man. He just. He um man he comes down to Maryland a lot because lacrosse I think his daughter plays lacrosse mm-hmm. uh so um you know just how much of a person he is because sometimes you even me playing in the NFL you see him and the aura of him you know kind of looks mystique and like you know he's not a human you know what I mean but then you sit across across from him in his office and uh he's just you know talking regular um but to be honest and the thing about uh and he has a sense of humor, man. And I, I tell people that all the time. It's, it's a little dry, but it's funny, you know, and, and he'll do it for a little bit, you know, but it's right back to business, you know what I mean, when uh, when it's time to, to play on the field. But um, I think, you know, one of the things, I mean, that was interesting to me of just about talking to me, like he knew a lot about me, you know, before I signed, you know, I'm there in his office and he knew my background, me being from Maryland. Uh, and you know, he brought that connection there. Uh, and again, him liking how I play, like it's, you know, it's, it's crazy to hear that from, you know, one of the best coaches out there and, you know, him telling me, you know, I was the best corner on the team at one point, you know, in 2009, um, because to be honest, like he benched me <laughs> one game <laughs> and then I was like, man, Bill, what the, you know, why am I, what you bitch me for, you know? And so he, they put up a film together about, you know, on some plays, good and bad. Mm-hmm. And then him and I watched it. And he was like, well, I'm glad we watched this. You know, he's like, you know, you one of our, our best corners. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? You know, <laughs> did you not, you know, believe that or think that already? But, um, but no, so just, just uh, the confidence that he had in me and, and showed in me and, and, you know, letting me know that I was a good player. Um, that's always good to hear when you're a player and, and hear that from your head coach. And yeah. and I, I do have to say, going back to that, sorry, yeah. the blowout by, 
you know, Buffalo was like, that was crazy to me. I, I didn't, I didn't foresee that. I mean, I, I thought Buffalo had the edge mm-hmm. against them. Yep. Uh, but man, I did not believe that, you know, that one would be a blowout for the, sure. The last time the Patriots got blown out like that was against the same Buffalo Bills. So mm. uh, that was last, <laughs> that was last year. So, oh, and, okay. and they lost, I think by 32 points or something like that. So uh, this, this isn't, this isn't the first time this has happened. And, and Bill right. Belichick, after what happened in the regular season and how really the first game, the Patriots completely dominated, even though it wasn't, right. it, it was it a cold game. Yeah, It wasn't a, a fun game to watch, but right. then Buffalo won in new England and everybody was talking about this game. Buffalo really wanted to come out and they wanted to come out to prove that they were the better team. And they did that. Right. And they did that. And, and see me just knowing Bill, I felt like, okay, he would, um, you know, devise something to be able to, you know, um, stop them or at least, you know, slow uh, the Buffalo Bills. Allen just proved and showed that he's just a different animal, um, you know, because he can use his legs. He can uh, get out the pocket and he's just a, he's just a great quarterback, you know, um, in the pocket as well. So, I mean, he's a tough guy to face. I'd feel reminisced if we didn't ask for your Super Bowl prediction being that, you know, it is not going to be too far from now. And we are getting narrowed down with the teams. We here. all know who he's going to pick. He's going to pick Tampa, <laughs> and Tom Brady. We well, know that. Tom Brady's got to play somebody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. I mean, listen. That's one thing I, I cannot bet against Tom. You just can't do it. I mean, and and to be honest, uh, Todd Bowles. That was my defensive back coach in Cleveland. He was a uh, the assistant defensive back coach when I was there in Cleveland, and he's a he's a great mind as far as defense. Uh, Bruce Arians. Um, he was actually offensive coordinator in Cleveland as well. So oh, wow. uh, you got some roots down there in Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah, some roots. So, so they again, need corner I, help, you know? Huh? They need another corner down there. He wants to do legislation. He wants to I'm do too, political stuff. He doesn't want that anymore. Nah, yeah, I'm too old. I'm too old, man. I can't do that. But, uh, <laughs> but no. So I, I feel like that their defense is well coached, and again, they have um, Tom Brady and and. Byron Leftwich, which is a, a, a good coach as well. I mean, calling great plays. So I think they have a – and it's not just Tom, you know what I mean, even though he's he's obviously on the field, you know, the field general, but it's it's everybody um, that's helping them around. And then, I mean, again, just what I just said, man, I feel like Buffalo. <laughs> wow, I you mean, got Buffalo, huh? I, I'm already – I'm reaching. I'm reaching with Buffalo mm. um, because Josh – I'm. Josh Allen, I mean, last year they had a, uh, you know, they got out, you know, prematurely. And I mm-hmm. think, I mean, he's, he's matured. He showed uh, to me that, um, you know, again, not only can he do it in a regular season, but now, I mean, doing it in the playoffs against, a again, a, a well-coached team mm-hmm. with Bill Belichick. Um, you know, Josh Allen, you know, uh, might be able to do, I mean, their defense, their safeties, you know, I, I like their safeties. Um you know, their D-line is, is pretty good, um, and their defense is solid. So, uh, again, and, and well coached. So, I mean, I would say those two teams. So he's got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. So I agree with one of them. There you go. Well, you got Tampa because you're – No, no, I don't have no Tampa. he had Bills 49ers at the start Bills. of the season. You have yeah, Bills I said no San Francisco – Months ago. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, as everybody knows, we are talking to former Browns, Lions, and Patriots corner, Lee Thank Bodden. You, mm-hmm. uh, before we let you go, and this is the last question for all of us, um, one of our fans keep mentioning, ask him about the butt fumble. I am a Jet fan. Uh, <laughs> you were there when the butt fumble happened with Mark Sanchez. Do you remember that? Uh, is that something that really stuck out to you in your career <laughs> when you had the experience to watch what Mark Sanchez did? Uh, yeah. as a New York Jet. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, it didn't stick out to me like in the game, but obviously <laughs> afterwards, you know, everybody's talking about it. Um, and so it, it, it looks crazy, you know what I mean, once you rewind it and talk about it. And, you know, <laughs> it's just, I you could probably find, you know, a few plays like that, but, you know, they highlighted it because New York media, you know, Mark Sanchez did, um, turn the ball over uh, quite a bit, uh, but to be honest, you had, man, an inter- a- you had an interception in that game. So. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but he's he's going down in history for that. You know what I mean? Uh, he'll never live that down because, again, I mean, the media just played it over and over and over. Mm. And um, but again, I mean, it's a routine. Like 
you know, running into your guy. Uh, well, I wouldn't say routine, but you know, th- <laughs> <That's a> routine. <laughs> but those type of things do happen, yeah. and and sometimes that causes it. But again, it's highlighted because it was Mark Sanchez. Uh, that is the New York media. Um, he did have a lot of turnovers, um, you know, in that stretch. So, and, and it was a game to where you know it it compiled. You know, what I mean, it compiled it a, every time you guys and, and I. I hate to say this, I'm a Jet fan. Every time the Patriots play the Jets, uh, a.k.a. Uh, we, we all know what Sam Donald said, the, uh, what was it, last year, saying that he saw ghosts. It, it, seems, <laughs> it seems like every time the Jets play the Patriots in New England, there's something that happens. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, the, the, the butt fumbles. I mean, Mark Sanchez went to won four away games in the playoffs, right. and the first thing they remember is the butt fumble. That's all they care <laughs> about is that night, and you had an interception. You were a big part of that game. You were one of the big players of that game, so uh, that's why one of our fans, he, he he keeps mentioning, ask him about the butt fumble. Ask him about the butt fumble. <laughs> Lee, I call yeah, that game the see, Paranormal Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> and see, but like you said, I mean, he won some playoff games. Uh, I think they were in the AFC Championship game. Yeah. I mean, he he did, you know, he did what he needed to do for that team. But a, a lot of times, again, that's going to uh, be in a lot of people's minds, like Jets' minds, because again, the media played it a lot, and it happens. So you can't, you know, erase it. But don't tell that to Rex Ryan because he had a tattoo of him on his uh, leg. So and, and eventually, uh, I think recently he just got it removed. So really, yeah, yeah that's I didn't what I heard. That. That's what I heard. Yeah, he just recently got it removed. But... I always feel bad for Brandon Moore because he was a good guard, and I always just get remembered for being the guy he ran into. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He has exactly. a big butt too. He I know, and he was a good guard too. I always feel bad for him. <laughs> Yeah, that's why he couldn't get out of the way, man. Sanchez, he wasn't that mobile, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, Lee, uh, tell the fans how they can find you on social media. Oh, man, everything Lee Bodden, at Lee Bodden, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Lee Bodden. Um, you know, and again, man, I appreciate you, Loud Mouths, man. Um, man, if y'all want to have me again, man, I, I would love to talk, you know, more playoffs. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, great. it's a great show, man. Thank you so much, and we would love to get you on again. Speedy, my producer, will reach out to you and get you on. Uh, we'd love to talk more football with Finally, you. Finally, somebody salutes back. I do that to everybody. No one ever freaking acknowledges it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. You the man, man. And, and good you, luck buddy. in their political uh, back, you know, political, uh, you know, the way you're going with your polit- politics and everything like that, because I think they, you know, with, with everything going on in the world, they need good people in office trying to help people. There's There's so much craziness that's going on right now in the world uh yeah you know and with everything that's gone on we all have to stick together because we're a country and and we need to stick together absolutely and that's and that's really why i'm doing it because you know politics a lot of times uh they don't care about the people and i i feel like the people again that's why they elect you know someone to be their representative and and they need a representative that's going to you know look back out for them and so that's really what I want to do um, because things haven't been, uh, you know, different from when I grew up. So I want to be able to change, you know, that hopefully I can, you know, succeed. If not, um, I still help out my community everywhere I uh, possibly can. That's wonderful. If you, need, if you need a campaign mantra to go by, you could do leadership with the way you spell your first name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it's and I do good. that a lot. I, I do put my... Uh, First name and, and a lot of things like that. So, man, I might do that. I appreciate that. Man, that's a good, that's a good idea. That, that's a that's good a, idea. That's yeah. an NFT for you right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> NFT. Anyways, Lee, thank you for joining us. We'll definitely get you on again. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.